a votary of truth. Introduction This is the life story of an eminent historian who is wedded to truth. A scholar's life is not as colorful as the life of a buccaneer, explorer or a mountaineer. Dr. S. Shrikanta Shastri often said Today's news is tomorrow's history. A good historian can make a dead civilization come to life by a thorough analysis. It is said that those who do not learn lessons from the past history are condemned to repeat it. Today, history has come to mean controversies. An objective and impartial assessment of history is the need of the hour. Childhood. Yes, Srikanta Shastri was born on 5th November 1904 at Srikanta Extension, house number 1 at Nanjangud, Mysore district. What influenced me was my heredity and my ancestry. I was to study of history. My, my father, Ramaswam Shakti, of Sunday Kuppum, was established in Nanjitgoti in 1904 when I was born in the shadow of the Stephen Deshwara temple there. His father, Sunday Kuppa, Ramaswami Shastri, was a sub registrar in the princely state of Mysore and mother was Sheshamma. She belonged to Vellala family of scholars of Motkanahalli, Magadi Taluk in Bangalore district. The ancestors of Yestrikanta Shastri on his father's side belonged to an equally renowned family of scholars called Akshantalu family residing at Sondekoppa, Nalamangala Taluk in Bangalore North District. Srikanta Shastri lost his mother at a young age while studying in middle school at Chikbalapur. During the early years of childhood, Srikanta Shastri was afflicted with smallpox. The left eye and the hearing in one ear was affected by the disease. The face was pockmarked for the rest of his life. After the death of his mother Sheshamma, Srikanta Shastri and his younger siblings were taken care of by his paternal grandmother Ignyamma who hailed from Kudere. <laughs> History, political science, option, Kaichika, and other things. That's Sunday <laughs> Thank you.
ಆ ಹೆಮ್ಮೆ ನಮ್ಗೆ ಇವತ್ತಿಗೂ ಇದೆ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಿ ಸ್ಕೂಲಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಅಟ್ ಚಿಕ್ಕಬಳ್ಳಾಪುರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಕೋಲಾ ವೇರ್ ಹಿಸ್ ಫಾದರ್ ವರ್ಕ್ ಆಸ್ ಎ ಸಬ್ ರಿಜಿಸ್ಟ್ರಾರ್ ಇನ್ ಕೋಲಾರ್ ಶ್ರೀಕಂಠ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಿ ಸ್ಟಡಿ ಪ್ರೈವೇಟ್ಲಿ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತ್ ತೆಲುಗು ಅಂಡ್ ಇಂಗ್ಲಿಷ್ ಲಿಟ್ರೇಚರ್ ಒನ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿ ಫ್ಯಾಮಿಲಿ ಸರ್ವೆಂಟ್ಸ್ ಬೈ ನೇಮ್ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಟಾಪ್ ಶ್ರೀಕಂಠ ಶಾಸ್ತ್ರಿ ಸ್ವಿಮ್ಮಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ರೆಸ್ಲ್ he also introduced him to telugu classics in high school shrikanta shastri was taught english literature by one gundura kannada by a stammering kannada pandit narsimhaya mathematics by shivarama krishna ayer and science by one relation of amble venkata krishnaya shrikanta shastri was fond of composing english poems in a grand eloquent style he read a farewell poem when his teacher gundurao got transferred he had to struggle through high school without spectacles as his eyesight was very poor shrikanta shastri passed slc scoring first class marks in history and economics he scored pass marks in mathematics and science He came to Bangalore and joined Government Collegiate School. Later, it became Government Degree College of Arts and Science. Shrikanta Shastri wrote Mysore University Entrance Examination but failed. His eyesight had deteriorated and a pair of spectacles was hard to come by. Again, he joined Wesleyan Collegiate School to prepare for for the university entrance examination at bangalore in the school the kannada pandit was dodda bele narayan shastri the telugu pandit was mahadev shastri maternal grandfather of shrikant shastri and the history teacher was nanjundaya who later became shrikant shastri's own student at maharaja college mysore why pursuing a ma degree course the principal was fuller who had gone on leave at that time and was in england reverend brunt a missionary engaged english classes he resorted to ridiculing hinduism and hindu gods this aroused the spirit of shrikant shastri who opposed reverend brunt and argued with him often About this time Edward the Prince of Wales visited India there were disturbances all over India and in Bangalore students took to streets and protested Shrikanta Shastri participated in many of these protest marches at this time Lokamanya Balagangadhar Tilak died and Lala Lajpat Rai and other freedom fighters were arrested and tortured Mahatma Gandhi launched his Satyagraha movement at this time. In the princely state of Mysore, police were given a free hand by the Maharaja to curb the agitation launched by the Congress party. Reverend Fuller came back from England and Reverend Brunt retired. At his farewell function, Shrikanta Shastri composed a Telugu poem in his honor. and it was recited by his classmate ramakrishna naidu shrikanta shastri passed the entrance examination in 1921 and was admitted into junior ba class at maharaja college mysore student days at maharaja college mysore 1921 to 19 25 from the diary of shrikant shastri i lived in maharaja college hostel first block along with subramanya son of mudde krishnappa in the room once occupied by professor n s subara principal and student of well known economist marshall shrikant shastri frequently suffered from malarial fevers 
He took too many quinine pills, which caused deafness in left ear. He also acquired thick glass spectacles in junior BA class. Shrikanta Shastri was awarded preship, that is, waiver of tuition fees in first BA. In first BA, students were taught economics by Professor N. S. Subarav, Greek history by H. Krishna Rao, politics or political science by S. S. Krishna Swami Iyengar, and Professor J. C. Rolo and H. V. Nanjundeya engaged English literature classes. B. Krishnappa and Pandit Vasudeva Char engaged Kannada classes. In the words of Shrikant Shastri from his diary, I participated in debate competitions, Karnataka Sangha activities, and was involved in rural scout movement. I lost my beloved grandmother, aged 90, during 1921. My grandmother, Ignyamma of Kuderu, remembered the Sanskrit compositions of my ancestors, such as Pedda Chandrasekara Shastri and Sita Ramalu, etc. I took them down in a notebook. My grandfather, Motaganahalli Mahadeva Shastri, had written down family compositions in a bound notebook. I copied many verses from this book during my second year BA, final year, as per old scheme. There was a plague scare, and students were temporarily shifted to. Sheshadri house and Maharaja hostel was disinfected. From the diary of Shrikan Shastri, in 1923, the students were taken on a historical trip by Professor S. V. Venkateshwara to Gadag, Bijapur and Badami. I also used to write poems in Kannada and English. I had shown some of my poems to B. M. Shrikantaya. Later, he commented in the classroom, You have a poet with you. He called out my name and requested me to explain some lines of John Milton's poem, La Allegro and Il Pensero. I read a paper in University Historical Association on Shivaganga. Dr. A. Venkata Subbaya, the well-known scholar, presided and Professor S. V. Venkateshwara appreciated it. In Karnataka Sangha, I presented a paper on Kannada Nagananda and my grandfather, Asthan Mahavidwan, Motgan Halli, Ramesh Shastri presided. Often, Professor J. C. Rolo would suggest topics for essay writing and S. V. Rangana and A. N. Murtira well, my tutors. Professor S. V. Rangana asked me to write an essay on our historical tour. I read a paper on Dwani in Sanskrit Association. Professor M. Hiryanna presided and Narsimha Shastri also discussed the subject. I passed BA degree examination in second class. I was requested to take up English literature for MA course by Professor J. C. Rollo, economics by Professor N. S. Subarao, Kannada by B. Krishnappa, and Sanskrit by Professor M. Hiryana. But I opted to study history under Professor S. V. Venkateshwara. MA in History, 1924 to 1925. In MA course, we studied archaeology and history of Kannada literature. Professor M. H. Krishna, who had returned from London, taught archaeology. B. Krishnappa, the first assistant professor in Kannada literature, taught us history of Karnataka till his eyesight failed him. Here, Krishna Shastri was working in Oriental Library and he was posted to Maharaja College where he taught us history of Kannada literature for six months. In July 1925, 
my first research article was published in the Journal of Royal Asiatic Society, London, on conquests of Siladitya in the south, from the diary of Sri Shastri. The first research article published by a first MA student cost quite a flutter in Maharaja College. Professor M. H. Krishna brought an ink impression of the inscription to the class and discussed it. Professor S. V. Venkateshwara walked into the classroom and singled out Srikanta Shastri and complimented him on the publication of the research article. Then I wrote my second research paper, Devaraya the Two, and sent it for publication to Modern Review, 1926, December, and to Indian Antiquary, edited by Edwards. This came to the notice of Professor S. V. Venkateshwara, who marked me out for research scholarship in Karnataka history. Sometime in 1923, the Maharaja Nagadi Krishna Rajavadiyar had a talk with the then Vice Chancellor Sir Brajendranath C. He wanted the University of Mysore History Department to take up a research project on the history of Mysore. The Vice Chancellor called Professor S. V. Venkateshwara for a discussion and requested him to take up this project. He invited Srikanta Shastri and asked him to take up this project. Srikanta Shastri told Professor S. V. Venkateshwara, the history of Mysore is a narrow field. This ambitious project should cover the whole history of Karnataka. Srikanta Shastri envisaged history of Karnataka to be published in 12 volumes. Srikanta Shastri and two others, that is Chandrasekhar Shastri and M. S. Subarao, were asked to write the first three volumes. Srikanta Shastri successfully completed Sources of Karnataka History, Volume 1, and Chandrasekhar Shastri died prematurely, and N. S. Subarao did not complete his volume on Palegars. But this Volume 1 has a jinxed history. The first manuscript was borrowed by a respected professor who did not return it. He wrote the manuscript again for the second time. This was also borrowed on the pretext of a peer review, never to be written by another illustrious gentleman. When Professor N. S. Subarao became Vice Chancellor, he requested Shrikan Shastri to write it for the third time. The University of Mysore Publication Department took 12 years to publish it. Professor uh, Srikanta Shastri is uh, known to me more by hearsay of his contemporaries whom I have met and from my father. My father was S.V. Venkateshwara who was a teacher of uh, Srikanta Shastri in the Peer College. Now, I do not recall, because I was very young at the time, meeting or talking exclusively with Shrikanta Shastri. But I do recall one incident when I know him, when I came to know him rather well. That was, I'm sorry to say not in my soul, but in Madras, where Shrikanta Shastri had come to see my father. And we were then living, my father was then professor of history in the Presidency College and the University of Madras. So then, I, I, that is the only time when I remember meeting or seeing Sri Ghanta Shastri. But the rest of what I am going to say is what I have gathered, information about Mysore more than Sri Ghanta Shastri, which may give you an, an idea of the of placing Srikanta Shastri in the right context of Mysore. Now Mysore in those days, when I was born in Mysore, towards the latter half of my father's stay, my father stayed in Mysore for 10 years. 
in the Maharajas College and Mysore University. As you know, it was one college university. Maharajas College is the only college of the Mysore University. And he was doing both in the university here. Now, <clears throat> in those days, Mysore was very well spread out. Houses were, big houses were very few. And the whole air of Mysore, it's difficult to say that there is any other town in, in India today which can compare or which can, which, which I can point out as like Mysore today. Because things have changed, people, the population has grown and many, many things have happened in the country. Now, there are three houses in that area in Saraswati Puram, which were very big and owned by the university. In one on the left corner, Professor Rolo was staying. He was a principal of the Maharaja's College. In the middle one, we were staying. That is allotted to my father. And on the right side was the house of the Deputy Commissioner of Mysore. By some arrangement with Mysore University, the Deputy Commissioner was, uh, was given that. That was coming close to the railway line. Now, and I, as a, as a child, was going up and down, and my, my impressions of, if I, if I talked about a, chi a, 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 a child's impression of my soul, I would be on safer ground to talk about it. <laughs> but to project myself as an adult and see what was happening there. But I must tell you that my soul in those days really was what was later on described as Ramrajya. Ramrajya meaning people were happy, people were good. The cost of living was so low that everybody, that no one was starving or uh, deprived of food. And that sort of a situation is very difficult to find nowadays when hunger and people dying of uh, hunger is, is so prevalent. And in Mysore especially, we had a good mix, even in those days, of Telugus, of Tamils, and in addition to Caribbeans. And I've heard that the Maharajas College, the university, the professors were picked by the Maharaja himself. The spade work was done by the lower crowd. And they would all interview and all that till you could get a call and then suggest what it is. But the final decision was Maharajas. This is something which is unique because today I don't think the, the, even the minister condescends to see a, a, a professor of a university before he is appointed in order to clear the point. But, but that, was, that was the extent to which the Maharaja took interest in his state. Later on many things happened with Satyagraha and the uh, independence movement also affected myself. And Rivalzai Israel was there as a given. And I have some memories of Rivalzai Israel more than Shikra Shastri. The last time I met Mirza was when he came to Madras and he particularly asked to see my father. So my father took me along and introduced me there. In this context of uh, the profession of teaching in those days, in history especially, my father would always insist that the student should know Sanskrit. Because we are talking of ancient Indian history. And the ancient Indian history, the language in those days was Sanskrit. If you talk of Manuscripts, we talk of epigraphy, if you talk of anything else, identification has to be in Sanskrit. It, it, is, it is written in Sanskrit. See, if you don't know Sanskrit, you are likely to make mistakes and so on. So, Sanskrit was important. And Sri Kata Shastri, I am glad to say, was a Sanskrit scholar. And in those days, Sanskrit really meant Vedic Sanskrit. Because you are going back many centuries back. 
the eminent scholars like R.C. Majumdar of Dhaka University, P.K. Gode of Pune University, and Diwan Sir Mirza Ismail hailed this book for its heuristic and documentary method. Freedom fighters like R.R. Divakar and Mohare Hanumantarao appreciated the efforts of the author. Some reviews on sources of Karnataka history, volume 1. In the words of Sir Mirza Ismail, Diwan of Mysore, letter dated July 1941, I congratulate the author and university. C. Sarkar in Journal of Bihar and Orissa Research Society, Volume 26, Part 3, page 260-262. We welcome this publication as a worthy attempt which will show the way to many other scholars and which will be eminently useful to all interested in South Indian studies. R. R. Divakar in Modern Review, January 1941. The Mysore University has been responsible for the publication of a number of Kannada, Sanskrit and English works so far. And this volume certainly adds to its credit as a progressive university it must have cost the author very hard labor and much cogitation since today the material for Karnataka history has scattered in poems, inscriptions, copper plates, manuscripts on palm leaf and whatnot. The author has promised to the great relief of scholars that he would deal with the Hoysalas and Vijayanagar kings in his next volume. He has written a very useful and scholarly introduction to the book. The book is indispensable to scholars and very interesting to the general reader. It is sure to arouse great interest among scholars even outside Karnataka. According to Dr. R.C. Majumdar, Vice Chancellor of University of Dhaka, Letter number 9754 dated 4th February 1941. It is a very useful and interesting book containing extracts from all the relevant sources of information about the history of Karnataka. I am sure it will prove very useful to the students of Karnataka history and will facilitate research in that subject. The extracts are carefully selected and critically edited. Letter from the Library of Congress, Accession Division, Washington, D.C. Dated March 7, 1941. Dear Sir, the Library of the Congress, the National Library of the University has a special need for the Sources of Karnataka History, Volume 1. It would be made available for use and we would greatly appreciate the courtesy. Very truly yours, Philip G. Kinney, FP, Acting Chief Accession Division. A.N. Upadhyay in New Indian Antiquary, Part 3, Number 12, March 1941. It is a praiseworthy effort on the part of the University of Mysore that it has inaugurated a historical series in which the Sources of Karnataka History Volume 1 is edited by Professor S. Fikati Shastri. It is Mysore that has given the world of scholars the grand volumes of Epigraphica Karnataka and there could not have been a better body than the University of Mysore to publish the sources of Karnataka history. This handy volume is a precious possession for the students of Karnataka history. We sincerely thank Professor Estrick and Shastri for his patient labor 
on the first volume and eagerly await the publication of subsequent volumes. P. K. Gode in Oriental Literary Digest, May, June 1941. These sources include sobriety of judgment in the minds of enthusiastic investigators and prevent futile controversies of the old type which consisted of mere assertion and denial without bringing forward an iota of fact as a contribution to the controversy. We congratulate Professor Shastri and, and the Mysore University on this nice and scholarly book on Karnataka history. Sarvada Nenita, Akendre, Auru, Itihasoda, Samsoda, Padhati and Wundritili, Rudsi, Cotton Thau, other Kramagal and the Hay Cotton Thau, Samagriga, Sankala, Hag, Agave Kunta Hedi, Matu Adarinda Yer, Palitam Sigurana, Yau Kramadali, now Padibo Dunta Hedi, our Hay Cotton Thau, Adarinda, Ananta the Pedigil, Vastovagi, Aga, Yenu, Bharati, Vidyan, Tanush. Hesernally, Indological Studies, Indo Department of Indology, Aram Bhavadaga, Nanaka Barasati to Adoric Canada Honors Pit to Adoric Hoks Air Corona Hagen Chen. Adrashtot Gagle, Nan Wandurshula, Avati Canada Honors, Mugsidina Dirinda, Adhaira and Madlila. Aga Adaka Baker than the part of Pati and our Siddha Persidu, Nanaka Japkai than Anaka. Either Kalpane, Potide or Runta Nanaka, and now Anantrada, Aneka Japakarana, we have the law, Rodi Divi, Adri Adeke, a steward on the Hakidavu, our second Shastri Gulota Nodu, Nana Nemikan Amele Yale Mogu in a hag, Yenadu Summer Sigur in the Kedre, Namameshru, Jarego Hero, on the card of Berdre, on the Summer Sea and Suchine Madi, he gave Teddy Bekagi and again Teddy on the Prashne Manasra Litukundo, the card of the day. At the Kivistar Wagi, Prochitravan, our Badita Idruhagi. At the Pondo, Nama Namapunya, our Kanada Kanada Lake Kanagala, Bidi Lake Kanagalu, Summersia Lake Kanagalu, Samshohana Lake Kanagalu, Samichi Dua Baronical. One day under Nama Bharti, a Samskritia. Nana Mukaburu, Adu Habba, Hunimagadu, Berberia Sandar Pugadu, in Tavandala Kurthage, Janapriva, the Patriki Gadalikuda Aru, Prajavani and the Patriki Lukuda, Baradadu, Yesto Janaki, Abaki Tilvaki Hutto Hagai. In nineteen twenty five, Sri Kantashastri married Nagaratnama, daughter of KU. Subramanya Shastri of Uravkunda, Anantapur district, present day Telangana state. They had three sons and two daughters in course of time. For a long time, Sri Kanta Shastri lived on Disubaya Road in house number 310. An interesting coincidence is the father of A.K. Ramanujan, linguist and poet, Professor A. Krishnaswamy, a professor of mathematics, lived opposite to Shrikanta Shastri's house. Dr. A. Venkata Subbaya, the famous scholar who had a PhD from Bern University in 1905 for a thesis on 64 Kalas lived in a nearby street. His house opposite Sri Sadvidya Anglo Sanskrit School, where Swami Vivekananda in 1892 had delivered lectures on Upanishads for three days. Talukina Venkannaya, the well known Kannada scholar, also lived for a few years on College Street which was adjacent to Shrikant Shastri's house. <laughs>